Hey everybody, this is Tyler Tapper. So happy to be with you guys here today for kind of a special video. It's the 50th one on the channel. So thank everybody for your support. And we'll get right into it. Initially when I saw this tree with these palm fibers on it, the only thing I could think of was making a laminate out of it. So I've done some other stuff with this in some videos in the past, but going back here and doing my original idea. So to make the scales for this, what I'm doing is I'm going through, and same thing you do with uh, carbon fiber or a fiberglass, I'm going through, I'm wetting down the layers, sticking them together with some two-part epoxy resin, and then I'm going to sandwich them in between these two pieces of glass. So off camera, to make sure the epoxy didn't stick to the glass, I use some paste wax. It's basically the same thing that you would use on a car. Put it on there, and that's supposed to make it slippery enough where the glass doesn't stick to the epoxy. So that was the plan anyway, but man, that glass was a bear to get off. I uh, used about everything I could to try and get it off. I was trying really hard not to break the glass. Eventually what I ended up doing is sticking the chisel next to it and hammering straight down, and that flexed it just enough where I could get it off, but I did end up breaking a little bit of glass. You can see how smooth that surface was under there, though. Compressing it there just really made a really nice surface finish on it. You could almost use it as is. To figure out what shape I needed exactly, I put some uh, tape onto the handle of the knife and did, basically did a rubbing around the edge of there, peeled the tape off and stuck it on. That way I could figure out exactly how I wanted to position it move it around to make the most use of the material. everything positioned I took it over to the scroll saw. The stuff was pretty easy to cut so getting the rough shape out of there and then I went back in and refined all the little parts. The less I have to sand off it just tends to be a little bit easier. After I had it roughly to shape I came back in. You can see I roughed up the back end of the scale there. I also roughed up the knife and cleaned it both off with acetone and using some two-part epoxy to get them glued together. So don't do this how I did it. Put this thing in a vise, this thing could have caught and came around and got my hand, but I came back in and drilled out the pins on the drill press. Then it was time to rinse and repeat for the other side with a little bit more two-part epoxy. Both of the scales on, I came back in and I did the majority of the stock removal on my belt sander. It's getting the shape rough, roughed out. The radius of the curve where your fingers go was a little bit too uh, severe to get on the belt sander, so I came in with a file. I wanted to do some inlays on the handle, so I came in and I laid out some lines and I cut them in with a wood saw. So I got some regular copper speaker wire and stripped the insulation off of it and the plan was to twist it together, uh, just impregnate it with a bunch of this epoxy and then stuff it into the uh, into these channels in here that I had made. For the center, I wanted to use a color in there, so I got some of that two-part epoxy and I mixed pearl into it, the same kind you would use in automotive paint. The nice thing about using the bonding two-part epoxy was that it was stiff enough where you could get it in there and flip it over and do both sides at the same time. So I trimmed it all up. I got it sanded down, and I just really wasn't feeling the copper in there. Um, I think it just, with all the fiber that was already in the handle, uh, you could see each end of each individual filament in there. If I would have used a solid copper wire, it could have worked, but I just tore it all out and then came back in and decided to do all three of them blue. I wanted to try making some mosaic pins for this knife, and what you're seeing here is actually my second attempt. 
the first ones I did when I put the smaller pieces inside, I didn't get the spacing right, so I decided to redo them with something that was a little bit simpler. What I just did there was cut the aluminum tube to size, and then I'm reaming out the end so it's even all the way through. If you aren't familiar with what a mosaic pin is, basically you get a hollow tube, you fill it with epoxy and then whatever else you want to put in there. I'm using two pieces of brass rod here, and I'm going to carry that blue I used over into the void. And I'm going to use this syringe. I cut off the needle. At first I actually tried to squeeze the epoxy through the needle. That did not work very well. So I'm cutting that off so it will thread into here. And then I'm going to tape around that so it's definitely a good seal so the epoxy doesn't ooze out. At this point it's pretty important to try to eliminate air bubbles so I tried to keep all of the epoxy near the top uh, and I plunged it up so to get all the air out first. Then I stuck those brass rods in there and gave it a squeeze until it started coming out the top. After that it cured overnight I came back with the angle grinder and just cut off the individual pins. With the first set I did I tried to come back in too quick and do this and it kind of mucked them up those cut down to the right size, it was time to get a little bit more two-part epoxy and put them in there. I did have to be careful because how I made the pins, those brass ones were in a line, so I wanted to make sure that lined up with the center inlay I did. So it took a little bit of fiddling. Whenever I set it down, they kept trying to move on me, but after they cured, I came back in and I got the majority of it off with a file. So it might be a little bit hard to see here, but they etched a weird kind of curly cue pattern into the top of the knife that I didn't like. So. When I was doing the final shaping on there, I made sure to go back in and just get that back down to bare metal. With the final shaping done, I did notice that I revealed a couple little pinholes in here. So it was just where that epoxy didn't penetrate all the way into there when I was laminating it. So I went back in and I did another skim coat of the same epoxy resin I used just to fill everything in. After all that cured, I sanded everything down to smooth again, and I came back in all the way up to about 220 grit before I did clear. For the clear, I'm using a two-part automotive base clear again. Now, if you don't have access to a spray gun or an air compressor, you can actually buy cans of this where it's mixed in two parts. Uh, you can only use it for one setting. You kind of crack it open and mix it up as it goes out. Um, but man, this stuff's really durable, and I really like the finish it gives. And especially with this knife where it was going to be such a fine grain little pattern inside there, I wanted you to be able to see every little fiber going through it. The other thing I recently changed is I went to this tiny little spray detail gun. If your air compressor isn't very big, this thing uses hardly any air. Came back in with the buffing wheel to hit it, especially since the top part of that knife I had sanded. I needed to make everything shiny again. Don't do it too much with the Damascus pattern on there because you can actually buff it right off. But a little bit seemed to really bring the shine out. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more, click subscribe, and I will see you guys the next time.